What is up, Disc Golf fans, and welcome to the Back Nine coverage of the 2023 Island Open presented by Dismania. We are here on this, I would say, harder Back Nine. My name is Chris German. Along beside me, we have Derek Skoll, and I am very excited about this coverage. It's been awesome golf to watch, uh, and this course is amazing. Yeah, it's definitely one of my favorite courses we've seen on the Swedish tour so far. Um, and I'm really excited to show everyone this impending storm that we have rolling in here on the back yeah, nine. You, you had to get your birdies on the front nine because they knew a storm was coming here on the back nine. Uh, conditions are going to get really poor. Um, yeah, Especially with all the play of the OB that's happening on this back nine, you definitely want as much control as you can get. Um, and when conditions get wet, it starts to reduce that control. Yeah, and we're in the open for a lot of these holes. We're going to start here with hole 10, uh, par three at about 420 uh, downhill. And you can just see how dark that cloud is behind them. Uh, most of the guys here are just going to go to the right, throw a big hyzer. I have to try to leak in. This is going too deep, though. Finds himself out of bounds with Canute. We have Oyvind. He has been putting together a solid round. Six down so far through nine. Hmm. That, that came up a lot shorter than I was expecting. Jakob Semerad. He's kind of had a roller coaster round so far. A couple birdies, a couple bogeys. That stays right on the tree line and should give himself a look. And we have Noah. He started off pretty hot keeping up with Oyvind, but a couple of bogeys as well on this front line, and he's going to find early. It's a tricky approach, and he's going to pull that right into that tree. Not much of a window there. Pitching out is pretty much all you got. Yeah, must. Oh, nice putt from Oyvind. So it's you were saying something early. about the circle too. I think Oyvind found it. Yeah, for sure. Just making it look so clean. Oh yeah. Nice putt from Jakob. So much spin on his putt. That's how like his putt is perfect for that type of putt when you just need a all wrist action. It's unfortunately going to take the bogey here as well. So a couple birdies, a couple bogeys. Big separator here on this chase card. We're going to move into hole 11. The first par, par 5 of the course, 400 meters here. Top of the world shot. Big shot off the tee. You want to land before that OB. Then your second shot, you want to kind of get around this spot. But there's just a pretty tight fairway overall. And like you are saying, with the conditions, the storm rolling in, you can play a tough hole here, especially with the green so close to the OB there on the left. Good shot there from Oyvind. We can see the rain starting to come down, so this is not the time you want the storm coming in. Right out, as soon as you get out into the open. I would also be concerned that the construction of a lot of these T areas where there's a big drop off at the front because you're playing top of the world style golf, um, when it, once it gets slick, you're definitely not going to want to commit on that shot nearly as much just for fear of going over the front. Those two discs basically landing right on top of each other, making minis. This is a huge pull from Noah. Is he trying to go over? Yeah, he's going to find OB. This should be good here from Jakub. Oh. Wow. Right All on right. the edge. Newt, this looks a little right, needs to get moving left. Oh, man. Got the skin of his teeth. Get 
everyone basically did a word ro uh, wardrobe change. So now I gotta see who's who. Well, yeah, Oyvind with a stock Heiser. Good job from him. And we got Noah from the drop zone. Should be fine as well. He's gonna. Well, it should be alright. I was gonna say he thought he pulled that right, but he's keeping it in bounds. Just trying to get up and down for par at this point. This hole was the fifth hardest and came in basically right at par. Well, that dug right into the ground, and you see that the OB kind of pushes further into the fairway where he landed, so it was a close one. Great shot there from Oyvind, put himself right inside the circle. This needs to get down from Canoe. Uh -oh. oh my goodness, that almost went in. <laughs> so he's going to find OB, unfortunately, a little too aggressive there. should be able to get his par. Noah's going to take his bogey and Oyvind missing the birdie putt. It's tough when it starts rain. Like it's one thing when it's already raining when you start your round, and you're already in it. But when it's kind of like the impending storm's coming, and then it finally does reach you, I always feel like it's so much chaos. And it's always on the hole that the rain starts, and it started right on this hole, and it just feels chaotic. And it, it feels like that as a filmmaker when we're out there filming, and I'm sure as an athlete. Yeah, I mean ha having to having to rush to put your rain gear on is never a good feeling especially in the heat of the moment when you know from the camera end of things you're just afraid of you know missing the action yeah so we're going to move into hole 12 404 foot 123 meter par three it's a slight downhill we have ob over there to the left and then this little ob ditch here right before the green could come into play some people might go big hyzer over that tree there to the right some people might go big forehand That needs to hook up. Oh, wow. <laughs> Luck box. Oh, wow. Keeping it just over that tree line. He's going to be long of the basket. to get down. I think that's, that's right close. on the edge as well. This is looking, this is looking good. good. Oh. Cool. Nice shot from Noah. It's crazy because Noah's score doesn't really show the type of game he's been playing. I thought he's been throwing a lot of really good shots so far today, but a couple bogeys there on the scorecard. And that was the pick-me-up Knut needed. Yeah, puts him back under for the round. And at this point, it's just, it, you got to play gritty golf. It's raining. You got to keep your head down and just know that the rest of the field is out here struggling as well. Something to note, though, since we kind of started the rain on hole 10, um, there were cards that were through the majority of their round already, so there were definitely some players that were fortunate enough to miss this storm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were definitely some hot scores that were put up there, and a lot of it was for that sheer fact they were a little earlier, and they were finishing their round at this point. It's always the interesting dynamic of weather with our sport, and the way tea times work is... 
it's always up in the air. You never know. Sometimes the morning guys get the run of the rain. Sometimes the afternoon guys get it. So I've heard a, a, an interesting theory that, um, you know, some people would consider maybe flip-flopping the tea times and alternating them round over round. So lead card goes early and late and vice versa. meter par three pretty straight shot overall here you just kind of go up this elevation a little bit and then this basket pitched up on this rock here some people might go the right line some people are probably going to go right up the gut we also have a tiered green here so there are a few platforms that you can go for but one of my favorite aspects of this, like I mentioned on round one, um, the backstop. Yeah, allows you to really get aggressive here. Seeing a couple different lines here up the gut. That one was kind of more of a right and let the disc work its way out. Jakub's gonna have to playing scramble. That backstop. Oh, 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 oh Oyvind. And, and, and with right a leaner. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Good bit there from Noah. Yeah, right height, just a little right. Not able to get as well, so the whole card is going to take a par here. About 60% of the field took par. This played about a quarter stroke under par, so these guys are losing strokes to the field here. It came in as one of the easier holes. shot on hole 11 where you're going to throw very steeply downhill uh, it's all about making sure you hit the right angle with your disc and you have this awesome island green here uh, that you're going to have to stick comes in as a pretty hard green i would say overall uh, it's pretty fast we saw greg go ob in round one off the green with a skip yeah i mean having the bullseye from the pin be right up on the edge of the ob that adds a whole extra level of challenge. Yeah, I mentioned I think this is a really good green in the placement of the green, of the pin on the green. Um, because if there's kind of like the bailout side to the right, and that's going to go OB, unfortunately for Noah. There's the oh, there's the right that you can bail out to, but I mean, you're leaving yourself such a tough shot for the putt because the basket is right up against the OB. So it's not even like you're going to run that putt anyway. Yeah, it's almost like the ideal play would be to just play the island short um, and leave yourself a better angle. If it just gets over. Big hyzer from Oyvind. There it is. Skips right over the hay bales and...
Now, we did see from Greg in round one, uh, he did play from where he went out over there, so. We even should have a par putt. Oh, wow. Thank you, Hay Bale. Kind of what you were saying, a little short there, but he's not safe on the green. Oh no, that's really unfortunate there from Semarab. Nice. Yeah, disc selection on this hole is very important because you know playing that skip potential. If you're going to play early and to the right more and allowing the skip to work in your favor, but if you don't have that dialed in as you can see half our car did overshoot the screen a little discussion on who's up here looks like Noah's going to be up Canute with the birdie though that is awesome to see he played it exactly like you said you just throw it a little short and then give yourself a better look at this basket Still possibility to, to miss the basket and go and be there. Something crazy happened, but yeah, release timing is definitely uh, different with these conditions. So um, you really got to be able to be confident in your putting stroke and your equipment. Yes, this hole played a quarter stroke under par, so one of the easier holes on the course. Five foot 90 meter par three. This one basically you're gonna have basket tucked over here to the right. Probably see some forehands turnover shot if you have it. I think that was a little bit of, I think he wanted that to turn a little earlier. And here's the forehand route. Which is a little too far. A, yeah, the, the forehand route's a little tricky, I think. I don't think the angle sets up as good as the turnover. And except this one. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, that that right there is like, you're going to go over stable, and there's a good chance of it skipping away. Plus, mm -hmm. you have the trees over there that uh, Semarod found, uh, where if you execute the turnover shot, it should land pretty smoothly kind of right on that green yeah it gives it a uh, the opportunity to flatten out and kind of land softly yeah not really much from over there great birdie there from oyvin as he kind of slowed down here on this back nine but he does find himself with another birdie tricky footing there you don't want to slip Wet, wet rocks are not ideal. You can see here that the pace of play is just significantly slower than we've been seeing thus far. Good par save there from Canute. See the rest of the cleanups here, but yeah, it's 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 so important to go through your routine and make sure the way that you play in the rain, uh, the way you pick up the disc, the way you cover the discs, all that comes into play, uh, and is very important because, as all of us know, getting your hands wet out there or getting something wet that shouldn't be wet uh, just really can really mess up your round.
some stretch here as we're going to move into hole 16, par 5, 251 meter, 961 foot. A lot of OB here, big landing zone here on your first shot. Gets a little tighter here on the second shot. And then you have the green kind of up in this tree line a little bit. Uh, could come in to play there at the end. But kind of in the middle of the pack type of hole here. And it does look like those bunkers do play as OB. I know earlier we saw in round one someone was throwing from one of those OB bunkers, but after looking at it, it does look like those are OB. So. so taking the shot from where it went into yeah, it the says bunker? OB. It, it says OB on the T sign. I don't know if that's hazard rules, but just something to keep in mind. And something we talked about in round one is it's very neat to see these on a just a disc golf course. Like it was yeah, they were very disc golf course. Very intentional. Yeah. Good landing zone, especially this one. This first shot here, it's in the perfect spot. We can see the sun starting to peek out a little bit, but it did not let up on the rain. It's looking pretty good from Oyvind. A good shot there. It's a good crush there as well. About 50% of the field took birdies here, so this is definitely one that all these guys should get. As long as you keep it in bounds. really this third shot and Noah keeps it a little low man Oyvind is dialed in finding the basket again from outside 100 feet wow these guys <laughs> little teasing on the card there. A bunch of these guys should be able to get birdies here. Noah, still the farthest out for his par save. And I want to give a huge shout out to the only eagle here for the day, Oni Arminen. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong, but he was the only one to take the eagle three. So that's only two for the event so far. Yes. And it was a 38 putt, 38 foot putt. So that means he was just outside the circle. So he must have had a mash on his second shot. We're going to move into hole 17, 114 meter par three. Super tight fairway here uh, if you do find it. But all these guys have the distance to, to not really have that come into play. But the OB on the backside there can come into play as it does play as a pretty fast green. So especially with it being wet, uh, you got to watch out for skips here. Great shot there from Oyvind. It's going to follow suit. That looks even better. It's right under the basket. Yaku giving that a good bid. Well, this yeah. came in as the second easiest hole. With over 50% of the field getting birdies here. So Oyvind, unfortunately, going to lose strokes to... Oh, Noah as well. Yeah. 
I was going to say lose strokes to the whole card, but spoke a little too soon there. Just a couple pars from Noah. Yakub gets himself to five after having a roller coaster front nine. He's really been able to stable out here on the back nine. And Knut as well here, making a good good run here at the end. We're moving to the last hole of this round two, hole 18, 267 meter, par four. Another elevated shot you gotta throw downhill. It's all about angle control, how you get your discs. OB that you have to go over on that first shot. And then we have this dog leg here to the left. And the basket right in front of this hazard and then OB right behind it. So pretty tricky hole overall. The second most difficult hole on the day. So Yeah, the green might as well be an island. Yeah, seriously. It's a good shot there from Knut. Should be great from Semerad as well. Uh-oh. Yeah, Waven pulls his a little too far wide and just isn't able to fight back in bounds. Crush there from Noah. So he's going to look to try to get a birdie here to finish out his round. Only that's about all Oivan can do there. Really far distance to be able to get all the way to the green, especially with that bunker right in front of the bit. So this needs a hook up, and it does. Great shot from Noah. Oh, looks like it caught the edge of the hazard and took the skip out of it. Big hyzer. Trying to spike it right in there and he does. Great shot there. This Knut should be able to finish with the birdie. Well, even he's going to take a bogey here, so that's going to push him down for nine over or nine under for the round. Jakob is going to finish with a turkey. Let's say good round from him. Way to really keep his head in there. Again, roller coaster in the beginning, but really picked it up here on the back nine. The Noah, probably not the round he wanted being here on coverage, but it was awesome to see him and see some really great shots out of him. Yeah, anytime and, that we can have global representation on our coverage, I'm very excited about that. Being able to showcase the world's athletes, not just the people in the spotlight here in the U.S. So we hope to see him again. Newt's going to want to finish strong here, and he does. He's going to get a turkey as well. Keeps him in the top 20. Not the round he was looking for. And Oyvind. Great round out of him. Putting up the 15 down. Jakob right behind him, though, at 14. Knut at 12, and then Noah slowing down there at 10. But we're going to take a look at the leaderboards. A couple faces we saw in previous rounds we're gonna have scott stokely Elias, and oivan and then timu so should be an exciting finish absolutely thanks again for tuning in everybody and looking forward to catching you all 
on round three.